A horror film is a film that seeks to elicit fear for entertainment purposes. Initially inspired by literature from authors like Edgar Allan Poe, Bram Stoker, and Mary Shelley, horror has existed as a film genre for more than a century. The macabre and the supernatural are frequent themes. Horror may also overlap with the fantasy, supernatural fiction, and thriller genres. Horror films often aim to evoke viewers' nightmares, fears, revulsions and terror of the unknown. Plots within the horror genre often involve the intrusion of an evil force, event, or personage into the everyday world. Prevalent elements include ghosts, extraterrestrials, vampires, werewolves, demons, Satanism, evil clowns, gore, torture, vicious animals, evil witches, monsters, zombies, cannibalism, psychopaths, natural, ecological or man-made disasters, and serial killers. Some sub-genres of horror film include low-budget horror, action horror, comedy horror, body horror, disaster horror, found footage, holiday horror, horror drama, psychological horror, science fiction horror, slasher, supernatural horror, gothic horror, natural horror, zombie horror, disaster films, first-person horror, and teen horror. History Topic: 1890s to 1900s The first depiction of the supernatural on screen appear in several of the short silent films created by the French pioneer filmmaker Georges Méliès in the late 1890s. The best known of these early supernatural-based works is the three-minute short film Le Manoir du Diable known in English as both The Haunted Castle or The House of the Devil. The film is sometimes credited as being the first ever horror film. In The Haunted Castle, a mischievous devil appears inside a medieval castle where he harasses the visitors. Melly's other popular horror film is La Cabin Mordite which literally translates to The Accursed Cave. The film, also known for its English title The Cave of the Demons, tells the story of a woman stumbling over a cave that is populated by the spirits and skeletons of people who died there. Melly's would also make other short films that historians consider now as horror comedies. Une New at Terrible 1896, which translates to A Terrible Night, tells the story of a man who tries to get a good night's sleep but ends up wrestling a giant spider. His other film, L'Auberge en 1897, or The Bewitched Inn, features a story of a hotel guest being pranked and tormented by an unseen presence. In 1897, the American photographer turned director George Albert Smith created The X Ray Fiend, 1897, a horror comedy trick film that came out a mere two years after X rays were invented. The film shows a couple of skeletons courting each other. An audience full of people unaccustomed to seeing moving skeletons on screen would have found it frightening and otherworldly. The next year, Smith created the short film Photographing a Ghost 1898, considered a precursor to the paranormal investigation subgenre. The film portrays three men attempting to photograph a ghost, only to fail time and again as the ghost eludes the men and throws chairs at them. Japan also made early forays into the horror genre. In 1898, a Japanese film company called Konishi Honten released two horror films both written by Ijiro Hada. These were Shinan no Sose, Resurrection of a Corpse, and Baked Jizo, Jizo the Spook. The film Shinan no Sose told the story of a dead man who comes back to life after having fallen from a coffin that two men were carrying. The writer Hada played the dead man, while the coffin bearers were played by Konishi Honten employees. Though there are no records of the cast, crew, or plot of Baked Jizo, it was likely based on the Japanese legend of Jizo statues, believed to provide safety and protection to children. The presence of the word bake, which can be translated to spook, ghost, or phantom, may imply a haunted or possessed statue. In Japan, Jizo, is a deity who is seen as the guardian of children, and in particular, children who died before their parents. Jizo has been worshipped as the guardian of the souls of Mizuko, the souls of stillborn, miscarried, or aborted fetuses. Spanish filmmaker Segundo de Choman is also one of the most significant silent film directors in early filmmaking. He was popular for his frequent camera tricks and optical illusions, an innovation that contributed heavily to the popularity of trick films in the period. 
His famous works include Satan se divierte 1907, which translates to Satan having fun, or Satan at play, La Casa Hechizada 1908, or The House of Ghosts, considered to be one of the earliest cinematic depictions of a haunted house premise, and Le Spectre Rouge 1907, or The Red Spectre, a collaboration film with French director Ferdinand Zecker about a demonic magician who attempts to perform his act in a mysterious grotto. The Selig Polyscope Company in the United States produced one of the first film adaptations of a horror-based novel. In 1908, the company produced the film Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, directed by Otis Turner and starring Hobart Bosworth in the lead role. The film is, however, now considered a lost film. The story was based on Robert Louis Stevenson's classic Gothic novella Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, published 15 years prior, about a man who transforms his personality between two contrasting personas. The book tells the classic story of a man with an unpredictably dual nature, usually very good, but sometimes shockingly evil as well. Georges Méliès also liked adapting the Faust legend into his films. In fact, the French filmmaker produced at least six variations of the German legend of the man who made a pact with the devil. Among his notable Faust films include Faust O Furs, 1903, known primarily for its English title The Damnation of Faust, or Faust in Hell. It is the filmmaker's third film adaptation of the Faust legend. In it, Melis took inspiration from Hector Berlioz's Faust opera, but it pays less attention to the story and more to the special effects that represent a tour of hell. The film takes advantage of stage machinery techniques and features special effects such as pyrotechnics, substitution splices, superimpositions on black backgrounds, and dissolves. Melis then made a sequel to that film called Damnation du Dr. Faust 1904, released in the U.S. as Faust and Marguerite. This time, the film was based on the opera by Charles Gounod. Melly's other devil-inspired films in this period include Les Quatsens Farces du Diable 1906, known in English as The Merry Frolics of Satan or The 400 Tricks of the Devil, a tale about an engineer who barters with the devil for superhuman powers and is forced to face the consequences. Melly's would also make other horror-based short films that aren't inspired by Faust, most notably the fantastical and unsettling Le Papillon Fantastique 1909, where a magician turns a butterfly woman into a spider beast. Topic. Trick films As the 19th century gave way to the 20th, artists and engineers were all pushing the boundaries of film. Artists like Melis, first achieved fame as a magician. During the time, stage magicians entertained large crowds with illusions and magic tricks, and decked out their sets with elaborate sets, costumes, and characters. While filmmakers like the Lumiere brothers were tinkering with motion picture devices and shot documentary-like films, Melis, and to an extent, Segundo de Choman as well, were developing magic tricks on film. They created sophisticated sight gags and theatrical special effects to either entertain or scare the audience. In his autobiography, Melis recalled a day when he was capturing footage on a Paris street when his camera jammed. Frustrated, he fiddled with the hand crank, fixed the problem, and started shooting again. When he developed the film later, and played it back, he discovered a new trick. The shot started with people walking, children skipping, and a horse-drawn omnibus workers trundling up the street. Then, in the blink of an eye, everything changed. Men turned into women, children were replaced by horses, and, spookiest of all, the omnibus full of workers changed into a hearse. Because of this, Melis had found a way to perform actual magic with editing, to fool an audience and pull off illusions he'd never been able to do on stage. This was the birth of trick films. Most of the early films in cinema history consist of continuous shots of short skits and or scenes from everyday life, i.e., The Kiss 1898 or Train Pulling into a Station 1896. Filmmakers doing trick films attempted to do the impossible on screen, like levitating heads, making people disappear or turning them into skeletons. Trick films were silent films designed to feature innovative special effects. This style of filmmaking was developed by innovators such as Georges Méliès and Segundo de Choman in their first cinematic experiments. In the first years of film, especially between 1898 and 1908, the trick film was one of the world's most popular film genres. 
Techniques explored in these trick films included slow motion and fast motion created by varying the camera cranking speed, the editing device called the substitution splice, and various in-camera effects, such as multiple exposure, for double exposures, especially, achieved to show faded or ghostly images on screen. The spectacular nature of trick films lives on especially on horror films. Trick films convey energetic whimsy that make impossible events seem to occur on screen. Trick films are in essence films in which artists use camera techniques to create magic tricks or special effects that feel otherworldly. Other examples of trick films include 1901's The Big Swallow in which a man tries to swallow the audience, and 1901's The Haunted Curiosity Shop in which apparitions appear inside an antiques shop. Topic. 1910s. In 1910, Edison Studios in the United States produced the first filmed version of Mary Shelley's 1818 classic Gothic novel Frankenstein, the popular story of a scientist creating a hideous, sapient creature through a scientific experiment. Adapted to the screen for the first time by director J. Searle Dawley, his movie Frankenstein, 1910, was deliberately designed to de-emphasize the horrific aspects of the story and focus on the story's mystical and psychological elements. Yet, the macabre nature of its source material made the film synonymous with the horror film genre. The United States continued producing films based on the 1886 Gothic novella The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, a classic tale about a doctor or scientist whose evil persona emerges after getting in contact with a magical formula. New York City's Thanhauser Film Corporation's One Real Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde 1912, was directed by Lucius Henderson and stars future director James Cruz in the title role. A year later, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde 1913, came out. This time it was independently produced by Imp the future Universal Studios, and stars King Baggett as the Doctor. In March 1911, the hour-long Italian silent film Epic L'Inferno was screened in the Teatro Mercadante in Naples. The film was adapted from the first part of Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy and took visual inspiration from Gustave Dore's haunting illustrations. It remains the best adaptation of the Inferno and is regarded by many scholars as the finest film adaptation of any of Dante's works to date. The film became an international success and is arguably the first true blockbuster in all of cinema. L'Inferno was directed by three artists, Francesco Bertolini, Adolfo Padovan, and Giuseppe de Liguoro. Their film is well remembered for its stunning visualization of the nine circles of hell and special effects that convey haunting visuals. The film presents a massive Lucifer with wings that stretch out behind him in front of a black void. He is seen devouring the Roman figures Brutus and Gaius in a display of double exposure and scale manipulation. According to critics, L'Inferno is able to capture some of the manic, tortuous, and bizarre imagery and themes of Dante's complex masterwork. In the 1910s, Georges Méliès would continue producing his Faustian films. The most significant of this period was 1912's Le Chevalier des Neiges, The Night of the Snows. It was Melly's last film with Faustian themes and the last of many films in which the filmmaker appeared as the devil. The film tells the story of a princess kidnapped by Satan and thrown into a dungeon. Her lover, the brave knight of the snows, must then go on a journey to rescue her. Special effects in the film were created with stage machinery, pyrotechnics, substitution splices, superimpositions, and dissolves. It is among a few of the best examples of trick films that Georges Méliès and Segundo de Choman helped popularized. In 1912, French director Abel Gantz released his short film Le Masque d'Oro, The Mask of Horror. The film tells the story of a mad sculptor who searches for the perfect realization of the mask of horror. He places himself in front of a mirror after smearing blood over himself with the glass of an oil lamp. He then swallows a virulent poison to observe the effects of pain. In 1913, German directors Stellan Rye and Paul Wegener made the silent horror film Der Student von Prague, The Student of Prague, loosely based on a short story by Edgar Allan Poe. The film tells the story of a student who inadvertently makes a Faustian bargain. In the film, a student asks a stranger to turn him into a rich man. The stranger visits the student later in his dorm room and conjures up pieces of gold and a contract for him to sign. 
In return, the stranger is granted to take anything he wants from the room. He chooses to take the student's mirror. Upon moving it from the wall, a doppelganger steps out and causes trouble. In Western culture, a doppelganger is a supernatural or ghostly double or look-alike of a specific person. It is usually seen as a harbinger of bad luck. Cinematographer Guido Sieber utilized groundbreaking camera tricks to create the effect of the doppelganger by using a mirror double which produces a seamless double exposure. The film was written by Hans Heinz Ewers, a noted writer of horror and fantasy stories. His involvement with the screenplay lent a much needed air of respectability to the fledgling art form of horror film and German expressionism on November 1915 until June 1916. French writer, director Louis Fuelade released a weekly serial entitled Les Vampires where he exploited the power of horror imagery to great effect. Consisting of ten parts or episodes and roughly seven hours long if combined, Les Vampires is considered to be one of the longest films ever made. The series tells a story of a criminal gang called the Vampires, who play upon their supernatural name and style to instill fear in the public and the police who desperately want to put a stop to them. Marked as Fulade's legendary opus, Les Vampires is considered a precursor to movie thrillers. The series is also a close cousin to the surrealist movement. Paul Wegener followed up the success of The Student of Prague by adapting a story inspired by the ancient Jewish legend of the Golem, an anthropomorphic being magically created entirely from clay or mud. Wegener teamed up with Henrik Galeen to create Der Golem 1915. The film, which is still partially lost, tells the story of an antique stealer who finds a golem, a clay statue, brought to life centuries before. The dealer resurrects the golem as a servant, but the golem falls in love with the antique dealer's wife. As she does not return his love, the golem commits a series of murders. Fagener made a sequel to the film two years later, this time he teamed up with co-director Rockus Gleiser and made Der Golem und die Tanzerin or The Golem and the Dancing Girl as it is known in English. It is now considered a lost film. Fagener would make a third Golem film another three years later to conclude his Dare Golem trilogy. In 1919, Austrian director Richard Oswald released a German silent anthology horror film called Unheimliche Geschichten, also known as Eerie Tales or Uncanny Tales. In the film, a bookshop closes and the portraits of the strumpet, death, and the devil come to life and amuse themselves by reading stories about themselves, of course, in various guises and eras. The film is split into five stories, The Apparition, The Hand, The Black Cat based on the Edgar Allan Poe's short story, The Suicide Club based on the Robert Louis Stevenson's short story collection, and Dare Spuk, which translates to The Spectre in English. The film is described as the critical link between the more conventional German mystery and detective films of the mid-1910s and the groundbreaking fantastic cinema of the early 1920s. Topic: 1920s. Topic: <laughs> German Expressionism. Robert Wien's 1920 Das Kabinett des Dr. Caligari, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, became a worldwide success and had a lasting impact on the film world, particularly for horror. It was not so much the story but the style that made it distinguishable from other films. Dr. Caligari's settings, some simply painted on canvas backdrops, are weirdly distorted, with caricatures of narrow streets, misshapen walls, odd rhomboid windows, and leaning doorframes. Effects of light and shadow were rendered by painting black lines and patterns directly on the floors and walls of sets." Critic Roger Ebert called it arguably, "...the first true horror film." and film reviewer Danny Perry called it cinema's first cult film and a precursor to arthouse films. Considered a classic, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari helped draw worldwide attention to the artistic merit of German cinema and had a major influence on American films, particularly in the genres of horror and film noir, introducing techniques such as the twist ending and the unreliable narrator to the language of narrative film. Writing for the book 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, horror film critic Kim Newman called The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, 
a major early entry in the horror genre, introducing images, themes, characters, and expressions that became fundamental to the likes of Todd Browning's Dracula and James Whale's Frankenstein, both from 1931. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari is also a leading example of what a German expressionist film looks like. In October 1920, Paul Wegener teamed up with co-director Karl Bowies to make the final Golem film entitled Der Golem, We Er in Die Welt Kam, known in English as The Golem, How He Came Into the World. The final film in the Der Golem trilogy, The Golem, How He Came Into the World 1920, is a prequel to Der Golem from 1915. In this film, Wegener stars as the golem who frightens a young lady with whom he is infatuated. The film is the best known of the series, as it is the only film that is completely preserved. It is also a leading example of early German Expressionism. F. W. Mernai arguably made the first vampire-themed movie, Nosferatu 1922. It was an unauthorized adaptation of Bram Stoker's gothic horror novel Dracula. In Nosferatu, Murnai created some of cinema's most lasting and haunting imagery which famously involve shadows of the creeping Count Orlok. This helped popularize the expressionism style in filmmaking. Many expressionist works of this era emphasize a distorted reality, stimulating the human psyche and have influenced the horror film genre. For most of the 1920s, German filmmakers like Wegener, Murnai, and Wien would significantly influence later productions not only in horror films but in filmmaking in general. They would become the leading innovators of the German Expressionist movement. The plots and stories of the German Expressionist films often dealt with madness and insanity. Arthur Robertson's film, Shatten, Einer Nachtliche Hallucination 1923, literally Shadows, a nocturnal hallucination, also known as Warning Shadows in English, is also one of the leading German expressionist films. It tells the story of house guests inside a manor given visions of what might happen if the manor's host, the Count played by Fritz Kortner, stays jealous and the guests do not reduce their advances towards his beautiful wife. Courtner's bulging eyes and twisted features are facets of a classic expressionist performance style, as his unnatural feelings contort his face and body into something that appears other than human. In 1924, German filmmaker Paul Lenny made another representative German expressionist film with Das Watchsfigenkabinett, or Waxworks as it is commonly known. The horror film tells a story of a writer who accepts a job from a wax museum to write a series of stories on different controversial figures including Ivan the Terrible and Jack the Ripper in order to boost business. Although Waxworks is often credited as a horror film, it is an anthology film that goes through several genres including a fantasy adventure, historical film, and horror film through its various episodes. Waxworks contain many elements present in a German expressionist movie. The film features deep shadows, moving shapes, and warped staircases. The director said of the film, I have tried to create sets so stylized that they evidence no idea of reality. Waxworks was director Paul Lenny's last film in Germany before heading to Hollywood to make some of the most important horror films of the late silent era, according to Wisecrack's episode on how horror movies changed. The horror genre blossoms anywhere there was pain and national chaos. So it's more than fitting that the genre's real boom took place in the mega-depressing post-World War I Germany. During the war 1914 to 1918, Germany banned all foreign films, inadvertently throwing all film nerds a boom. Combine that embargo with the general despair of the era, you'll see why German Expressionism took place. German Expressionism was a film genre that was all about coping with economic and social fallout via dream-like horror films, filled with subjective shots, funky angles, high-contrast spooky lighting, and frequently, sympathetic monsters. <laughs> Universal Classic Monsters 1920s Though the word horror to describe the film genre would not be used until the 1930s when Universal Pictures began releasing their initial monster films, early American productions often relied on horror and gothic themes. Many of these early films were considered dark melodramas because of their stock characters and emotion-heavy plots that focused on romance, violence, suspense, and sentimentality. In 1923, Universal Pictures started producing films with horror and mostly gothic elements. 
this would retroactively become the first phase of the studio's Universal Classic Monsters series that would continue for three more decades. Universal Pictures' classic monsters of the 1920s featured hideously deformed characters like Quasimodo, The Phantom, and Gwynplaine. The first film of the series was The Hunchback of Notre Dame, 1923, starring Lon Chaney as the hunchback Quasimodo. The film was adapted from the classic French Gothic novel of the same name written by Victor Hugo in 1833, about a horribly deformed bell ringer in the Cathedral of Notre Dame. The film elevated Cheney, already a well-known character actor, to full star status in Hollywood, and also helped set a standard for many later horror films. Two years later, Cheney stars as the phantom who haunts the Paris Opera House in 1925's silent horror film, The Phantom of the Opera, based on the mystery novel by Gaston Leroux published 15 years earlier. Roger Ebert said the film, "...creates beneath the opera one of the most grotesque places in the cinema, and Cheney's performance transforms an absurd character into a haunting one." Adrian Warren of Pop Matters called the film, "...terrific, unsettling, beautifully shot and imbued with a dense and shadowy gothic atmosphere." Included in the book 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, 1925's The Phantom of the Opera is lauded for Lon Chaney's masterful acting, Universal Pictures' incredible set design, and its many masterly moments including the unmasking of the tragic villain's disfigured skullface, so shocking that even the camera is terrified, going briefly out of focus. In 1927, German director Paul Lenny directed his first of two films for Universal Pictures. His silent horror film The Cat and the Canary is the third film in the Universal Classic Monsters series and is considered the cornerstone of Universal School of Horror. The Cat and the Canary is adapted from John Willard's black comedy play of the same name. The plot revolves around the death of a man and the reading of his will 20 years later. His family inherits his fortunes, but when they spend the night in his haunted mansion they are stalked by a mysterious figure. Meanwhile, a lunatic known as the Cat escapes from an asylum and hides in the mansion. The film is part of a genre of comedy horror films inspired by 1920s Broadway stage plays. Paul Lenny's adaptation of Willard's play blended expressionism with humor, a style Lenny was notable for and critics recognized as unique. Alfred Hitchcock cited this film as one of his influences and Tony Raines called it the definitive haunted house movie. Paul Lenny's second film for Universal Pictures was The Man Who Laughs 1928, an adaptation of another Victor Hugo novel. The film, starring Conrad Vate, is known for the bleak carnival freak-like grin on the character Gwynplaine's face. His exaggerated smile was the inspiration for DC Comics' The Joker. A graphic novel in 2005 exploring the origins of The Joker was also titled Batman, The Man Who Laughs in homage to this film. Film critic Roger Ebert stated, The Man Who Laughs is a melodrama, at times even a swashbuckler, but so steeped in expressionist gloom that it plays like a horror film. The fifth and last film of the Universal Classic Monsters series in the 1920s is The Last Performance 1929. It was directed by Paul Fahos and stars Conrad Vate and Mary Philbin. Vate plays a middle-aged magician who is in love with his beautiful young assistant. She, on the other hand, is in love with the magician's young protégé, who turns out to be a bum and a thief. The film received mixed reviews and a 1929 New York Times article even said that, Dr. Fehos has handled his scenes with no small degree of imagination." A letterboxed reviewer called it a «backstage melodrama with eerie intimations of horror». Other productions. The trend of inserting an element of macabre into American pre-horror melodramas was popular in the 1920s. Directors known for relying on macabre in their films during the decade were Maurice Tourneur, Rex Ingram, and Todd Browning. Ingram's The Magician, 1926, contains one of the first examples of a «mad doctor» and is said to have had a large influence on James Whale's version of Frankenstein. The Unholy Three 1925, is an example of Todd Browning's use of macabre and unique style of morbidity. He remade the film in 1930 as a talkie. In 1927, Todd Browning cast Lon Chaney in his horror film The Unknown. 
Cheney played a carnival knife thrower called Alonzo the Armless and Joan Crawford as the scantily clad carnival girl he hopes to marry. Cheney did collaborative scenes with a real-life armless double whose legs and feet were used to manipulate objects such as knives and cigarettes in frame with Cheney's upper body and face. 1928's The Terror by Warner Bros. Pictures was the first all-talking horror film, made using the Vitaphone sound on disc system. The film tells a simple story of guests at an old English manor being stalked by a mysterious killer known only as the Terror. The plot centered on sound, with much of the ghost's haunting taking place in vis a vis creepy organ music, creaky doors, and howling winds. The film was poorly received by audiences and critics. John McCormack, reporting from London for The New York Times upon the film's UK premiere, wrote, The universal opinion of London critics is that the terror is so bad that it is almost suicidal. They claim that it is monotonous, slow, dragging, fatiguing, and boring. Other European countries also, contributed to the genre during this period. In Sweden, Victor Sjöström created Korkelen, the Phantom Carriage, in 1921. This is what the Criterion have to say about the film, the last person to die on New Year's Eve before the clock strikes 12 is doomed to take the reins of Death's Chariot and work tirelessly collecting fresh souls for the next year. So says the legend that drives the phantom carriage, Korkelen, directed by the father of Swedish cinema, Victor Sjöström. The story, based on a novel by Nobel Prize winner Selma Lagerlöf, concerns an alcoholic, abusive ne'er-do-well, Sjöström himself, who is shown the error of his ways, and the pure of heart Salvation Army sister who believes in his redemption. This extraordinarily rich and innovative silent classic, which inspired Ingmar Bergman to make movies, is a Dickensian ghost story and a deeply moving morality tale, as well as a showcase for groundbreaking special effects. In 1922, Danish filmmaker Benjamin Christensen created the Swedish Danish production Haxen, also known as The Witches or Witchcraft Through the Ages, a documentary style silent horror film based partly on Christensen's study of the Malleus Maleficarum, a 15th century German guide for inquisitors. Haxon is a study of how superstition and the misunderstanding of diseases and mental illness could lead to the hysteria of the witch hunts. Too, the film was made as a documentary but contains dramatized sequences that are comparable to horror films. To visualize his subject matter, Christensen fills the frame with every frightening image he can conjure out of the historical records, often freely blending fact and fantasy. There are shocking moments in which we witness a woman giving birth to two enormous demons, see a witch's sabbath, and endure tortures by Inquisition judges. The film also features an endless parade of demons of all shapes and sizes, some of whom look more or less human, whereas others, are almost fully animal pigs, twisted birds, cats, and the like. French filmmaker Jean Epstein produced an influential film, La Chute de la Maison Usher, the Fall of the House of Usher in 1928. It is one of multiple films based on the Edgar Allan Poe gothic short story The Fall of the House of Usher. Future director Louis Bunwell co-wrote the screenplay with Epstein, his second film credit, having previously worked as assistant director on Epstein's film Moprat from 1926. Roger Ebert included the film on his list of great movies in 2002, calling the Great Hall of the film as one of the most haunting spaces in the movies. Il Mostro di Frankenstein 1921, one of a few Italian horror film before the late 1950s, is now considered lost. Topic: 1930s. Topic: Universal Classic Monsters 1930s. In the 1930s Universal Pictures continued producing films based on gothic horror. In this decade, the studio assembled several iconic monsters in motion picture history including Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, The Invisible Man, and The Wolf Man. Each movie starring these monsters would go on to make sequels and each of them would go on to cross over with each other in a cinematic shared universe. The films would retroactively be classified together as part of the Universal Classic Monsters series. Universal Pictures created a monopoly on the mainstream horror film, producing stars such as Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff, and grossing large sums of money at the box office in the process. 
Not only did Universal bring the subgenre of creature features into the limelight, they also gave them their golden years, now reflected back on as the monster's golden era. In the 1920s, the studio only put out five features, in the 1930s however, they produced about 21. In the year 1930, Universal Pictures released the mystery film The Cat Creeps. It was a sound remake of the studio's earlier film, The Cat and the Canary from three years ago. Simultaneously, Universal also released a Spanish-speaking version of the film called La Voluntad del Muerto The Will of the Dead Man. The film was directed by George Melford who would later direct the Spanish version of Dracula. Both The Cat Creeps and La Voluntad del Muerto are considered lost films. On February 14, 1931, Universal Pictures premiered their first film adaptation of Dracula, the popular story of an ancient vampire who arrives in England where he preys upon a virtuous young girl. The film was based on the 1924 stage play by Hamilton Dean and John L. Baldiston, which in turn was loosely based on the classic 1897 novel by Bram Stoker. February 1931's Dracula was an English-language vampire horror film directed by Todd Browning and stars Bela Lugosi as the Count Dracula, the actor's most iconic role. The film was generally well received by critics. Variety praised the film for its "...remarkably effective background of creepy atmosphere." Film Daily declared it "...a fine melodrama," and also lauded Lugosi's performance, calling it "...splendid," and remarking that he had created one of the most unique and powerful roles of the screen." Kim Newman, writing for the book 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, said that Dracula signaled the "...true beginning of the horror film as a distinct genre and the vampire movie as its most popular subgenre." Two months later on April 24, 1931, Universal Pictures premiered the Spanish-language version of Dracula directed by George Melford. April 1931's Dracula was filmed at night on the same sets that were being used during the day for the English language version. Of the cast, only Carlos Velarias playing Count Dracula was permitted to see rushes of the English language film, and he was encouraged to imitate Bela Lugosi's performance. Some long shots of Lugosi as the Count and some alternative takes from the English version were used in this production. In recent years, this version has become more highly praised than Todd Browning's English-language version. The Spanish crew had the advantage of watching the English dailies when they came in for the evening, and they would devise better camera angles and more effective use of lighting in an attempt to improve upon it. In 2015, the Library of Congress selected the film for preservation in the National Film Registry, finding it culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. On November 21, 1931, Universal Pictures released another hit film with Frankenstein. The story is about a scientist and his assistant who dig up corpses in the hopes to reanimate them with electricity. The experiment goes awry when Dr. Frankenstein's assistant accidentally gives the creature a murderer's abnormal brain. 1931's Frankenstein was based on a 1927 play by Peggy Webling which in turn was based off Mary Shelley's classic 1818 Gothic novel. The film was directed by James Whale and stars Boris Karloff as Frankenstein's monster in one of his most iconic roles. A hit with both audiences and critics, the film was followed by multiple sequels and along with the same year's Dracula, has become one of the most famous horror films in history. Universal's makeup genius Jack Pierce created the main look of the monster, devising the flat top, the neck terminals, the heavy eyelids, and the elongated scarred hands, while director James Whale outfitted the creature with a shabby suit. On February 21, 1932, Universal Pictures released a double feature. The first one is Murders in the Room Org. It stars Bela Lugosi as a lunatic scientist who abducts women and injects them with blood from his ill tempered caged ape. The film was loosely based on an 1841 short story by Edgar Allan Poe. Universal Pictures would release two more Poe adaptations later in the decade. The second film in the double feature is the James Whale directed The Old Dark House. It's a mystery horror story starring Boris Karloff. Five travelers are admitted to a large foreboding old house that belongs to an extremely strange family. The story was based on a 1927 novel by J.B. Priestley
On December 1932, the studio released The Mummy, starring Boris Karloff as the Egyptian monster. The film, based on an original screenplay, is about an ancient Egyptian mummy named Imhotep who is discovered by a team of archaeologists and inadvertently brought back to life through a magic scroll. Review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes reports a 93% score, based on 27 reviews, with an average rating of 7.9, 10. The site's consensus states, relying more on mood and atmosphere than the thrills typical of modern horror fare, Universal's The Mummy sets a masterful template for mummy-themed films to follow. The mummy character was so popular that it spawned sequels and remakes over the next decades. Makeup artist Jack Pierce was responsible for the look of the mummy. After studying photos of ancient mummies, Pierce came up with the look bearing a resemblance to the mummy of Ramesses III. Pierce began transforming Karloff at 11 a.m., applying cotton, collodion, and spirit gum to his face, clay to his hair, and wrapping him in linen bandages treated with acid and burnt in an oven, finishing the job at 7 p.m. Karloff finished his scenes by 2 a.m., and another two hours were spent removing the makeup. Boris Karloff found the removal of gum from his face painful, and overall found the day the most trying ordeal I had ever endured. The image of Karloff wrapped in bandages has become one of the most iconic images in the series. Jack Pierce would also come to design the satanic makeup for Lugosi in the independently produced White Zombie, 1932. After the release of The Mummy, Universal followed a trilogy of films based on the tales of Edgar Allan Poe, Murders in the Rue Morgue 1932, The Black Cat 1934, and The Raven 1935, the latter two of which teamed Lugosi with Karloff. Universal then began releasing sequels including Bride of Frankenstein 1935, and Dracula's Daughter 1936. They also made the first mainstream werewolf picture, Werewolf of London, 1935, which wasn't a box office triumph during release despite being revered by audiences today. Other studios followed Universal's lead. MGM's Controversial Freaks, 1932, which featured characters played by people who had real deformities, frightened audiences at the time. The studio even disowned the film, and it remained banned, in the United Kingdom, for 30 years. Paramount Pictures' Drive Jekyll and Mr. Hyde 1931 is remembered for its innovative use of photographic filters to create Jekyll's transformation before the camera. And RKO created the highly successful and influential monster movie, King Kong 1933. With the progression of the genre, actors like Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi were beginning to build entire careers in horror. Early in the decade also, Danish director Carl Theodor Dreyer created the horror fantasy film Vampire 1932, based on elements from J. Sheridan Le Fanu's collection of supernatural stories in A Glass Darkly. The German-produced sound film tells the story of Alan Gray, a student of the occult who enters a village under the curse of a vampire. According to the book 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, Vampire's greatness derives partly from Dreyer's handling of the vampire theme in terms of sexuality and eroticism, and partly from its highly distinctive, dreamy look. Topic: 1940s. In the 1940s, Val Luton became a well-known figure in early B-horror cinema for making low-budget movies for RKO Pictures, including I Walk with a Zombie 1943, The Body Snatcher 1945, and Cat People 1942, a film deemed by the United States National Film Registry as being "...culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant." The decade also sees the continuation of Universal Pictures' consistent releases of horror, suspense and science fiction films. This comes to be later known as the cult classic Universal Classic Monsters series which began in the 1920s and would later dissipate in the 1950s. In this decade Lon Chaney Jr. became the studio's leading monster movie actor supplanting the previous decade's leading stars Karloff and Lugosi by a wide margin in terms of the number of leading roles that he played. Chaney is best known playing Larry Talbot in The Wolfman and its sequels and crossover films. He also played Frankenstein's monster in The Ghost of Frankenstein taking over Boris Karloff in the main role. 
The Mummy series was also continued with The Mummy's Tomb 1942, The Mummy's Ghost and The Mummy's Curse both 1944, all starring Chaney Jr. as The Mummy. Paramount Pictures also made horror films in the 1940s, the most popular of which is The Uninvited. The film has been noted by contemporary film scholars as being the first film in history to portray ghosts as legitimate entities rather than illusions or misunderstandings played for comedy. It depicts various supernatural phenomena, including disembodied voices, apparitions, and possession. MGM's best horror genre contribution of the 1940s would be Albert Loon's The Picture of Dorian Gray, which was popularly known for its interesting use of color insert to show Dorian's haunting portrait. In 1945, Great Britain contributed the anthology horror film Dead of Night. In the film house guests tell at least five supernatural tales, the last of which being the most remembered. The film's last story, titled The Ventriloquist's Dummy features a ventriloquist tormented by a malevolent puppet. The popularity of movie genres of the 1940s were mostly film noir, melodrama and mystery. It would then arguably be a stretch to point out that some mystery and thriller films can be considered horror genre contributions of the decade. These movies include The Spiral Staircase 1946, which tells the story of a serial killer targeting women with afflictions, like the mute and blind, The Seventh Victim 1943, a horror film noir story of a woman stumbling upon a satanic cult while looking for her missing sister, and John Bram's The Lodger 1944, where a landlady suspects her new lodger to be Jack the Ripper. The Queen of Spades 1949, is a fantasy, horror film about an elderly countess who strikes a bargain with the devil and exchanges her soul for the ability to always win at cards. Wes Anderson ranked it as the sixth best British film. Martin Scorsese said that The Queen of Spades is a «stunning film» and one of «the few true classics of supernatural cinema», and Dennis Schwartz of Ozis's World Movie Reviews called it a masterfully filmed surreal atmospheric supernatural tale. Topic: 1950s. With advances in technology, the tone of horror films shifted from the gothic towards contemporary concerns. A popular horror subgenre began to emerge, the doomsday film. Low-budget productions featured humanity overcoming threats such as alien invasions and deadly mutations to people, plants, and insects. Popular films of this genre include Creature from the Black Lagoon 1954 and The Blob 1958. 1956's science fiction, horror film Invasion of the Body Snatchers concerns an extraterrestrial invasion where aliens are capable of reproducing a duplicate replacement copy of each human. It is considered to be the most popular and most paranoid films from the golden age of American sci-fi cinema. In the 1950s, television had arrived and the theatrical market was changing. Producers and exhibitors found new, exciting and enticing ways to keep audiences in theaters. This is how Hollywood directors and producers found ample opportunity for audience exploitation through gimmicks. The years 1952 through 1954 is considered the golden era of 3D movies. In a three-dimensional stereoscopic film, the audience's brains are tricked into believing the images projected onto a flat cinema screen are coming to life in full three-dimensional glory. Through this way, the audience's fright factor is enhanced. Those who came to see a 3D movie inside a theater were given the familiar disposable cardboard anaglyph 3D glasses to wear which will allow them to see the images come to life. In April 1953, Warner Bros. presented the horror thriller House of Wax, the first 3D feature with stereophonic sound. The film, which stars Vincent Price, tells the story of a disfigured sculptor who repopulates his destroyed wax museum by murdering people and using their wax-coated corpses as displays. House of Wax was the film that typecast Price as a horror icon. A year later, he played a trademark role as a round-the-bend illusionist bent on revenge in the 3D film noir, Horror the Mad Magician, 1954. After the release of that film, Price would be labeled the King of 3D, and would later become the actor to star in the most 3D features. The success of these two films proved that major studios now had a method of getting film-goers back into theaters and away from television sets, which were causing a steady decline in attendance. 
Aside from 3D technology, different forms of promotional gimmicks were used to entice filmgoers into seeing the films in theaters. One great example is during the screening of 1958's The Lost Missile, a science fiction film in which scientists try to stop a mysterious missile from destroying the Earth. Audiences who saw the film in theaters were given shock tags to monitor their vitals during the movie. They were promised that anyone who would get shocked into a comatose state by the film would get a free ride home in a limousine. Film director and producer William Castle is considered the king of the film gimmick. After directing a cavalcade of B-movies low-budget commercial films for Columbia Pictures in the 1940s, Castle set out on the independent route. And to help sell his first self-financed film Macabre, 1958, he not only hired girls to stand in as fake nurses outside theater doors just in case anyone needed medical attention, he also passed out a certificate for a $1,000 life insurance policy to each member of the audience in case anyone would happen to die of fright from watching his film. This kind of promotional gimmick would later make him famous. Other gimmicks Castle utilized in his films include EMERGO which was used during the screening of his 1959 classic House on Haunted Hill starring Vincent Price. Throughout the promotion of this film, Castle explained that through EMERGO, ghosts and skeletons leave the screen and wander throughout the audience, roam around and go back to the screen. Of course, in actuality, a skeleton with glowing red eyes was attached to wires above the theater in order to swoop in and float above audience members' heads to parallel the action on the screen. Another castle, Price production was The Tingler which tells the story of a scientist who discovers a parasite in human beings, called a tingler, which feeds on fear. In the film, Price breaks the fourth wall and warns the audience that the Tingler is in the theater which then prompts the built-in electric buzzers to scare audiences in their theater seats. The 1950s is also well known for creature feature or giant monster movies. These are usually disaster films that focuses on a group of characters struggling to survive attacks by one or more antagonistic monsters, often abnormally large ones. The monster is often created by a folly of mankind, an experiment gone wrong, the effects of radiation or the destruction of habitat. The monster can also be from outer space, or has been on Earth for a long time with no one ever seeing it, or released, or awakened from a prison of some sort where it was being held. In monster movies, the monster is usually a villain, but can be a metaphor of humankind's continuous destruction. Warner Bros. The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms 1953, is considered to be the film which kick-started the 1950s wave of monster movies and the concept of combining nuclear paranoia with the genre. In the film, a beast was awakened from its hibernating state in the frozen ice of the Arctic Circle by an atomic bomb test. It then begins to wreak a path of destruction as it travels southward, eventually arriving at its ancient spawning grounds, which includes New York City. The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms was the first ever live-action film to feature a giant monster awakened, brought about by an atomic bomb detonation, preceding Godzilla by 16 months. The film is also remembered for its influential stop-motion model animation created by visual effects creator Ray Harryhausen. Ray Harryhausen created his own form of stop-motion model animation called Dynamation. It involved photographing a miniature against a rear projection screen through a partly masked pane of glass. The masked portion would then be re-exposed to insert foreground elements from the live footage. The effect was to make the creature appear to move in the midst of live action. It could now be seen walking behind a live tree, or be viewed in the middle distance over the shoulder of a live actor. Effects difficult to achieve before. Harryhausen's innovative style of special effects in films inspired numerous filmmakers including future fantasy and horror directors Peter Jackson, Tim Burton, and Guillermo del Toro. In the 1963 fantasy film Jason and the Argonauts, there is an iconic fight scene that involves skeleton warriors. That scene spurred on numerous homages in many horror films in subsequent years including 1987's A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, 1992's Army of Darkness and 2014's Game of Thrones Season 4 episode entitled The Children. Other notable creature films include It Came From Beneath the Sea, 1955, Tarantula, 1955, and The Giant Behemoth, 1959. 
Japan's experience with Hiroshima and Nagasaki bore the well-known Godzilla 1954, and its many sequels, featuring mutation from the effects of nuclear radiation. This kick-started the tokusatsu trend known as kaiju films, a Japanese film genre that features giant monsters, usually attacking major cities and engaging the military and other monsters in battle. Other films in this genre that isn't about Godzilla include Rodan 1956, and The Mysterians 1957. Besides kaiju films, Japan was also into ghost cat, feline ghost movies in the 50s. These include Ghost Cat of Gorju Sansudi, 1956, and Black Cat Mansion, 1958, which tells the story of a samurai tormented by a cat possessed by the spirits of the people she killed. Filmmakers continued to merge elements of science fiction and horror over the following decades. The Fly is a 1958 American science fiction horror film starring Vincent Price. The film tells the story of a scientist who is transformed into a grotesque creature after a common house fly enters unseen into a molecular transporter he is experimenting with, resulting in his atoms being combined with those of the insect, which produces a human-fly hybrid. The film was released in Cinemascope with Color by Deluxe by 20th Century Fox. It was followed by two black and white sequels, Return of the Fly 1959, and Curse of the Fly 1965. The original film was remade in 1986 by director David Cronenberg. Considered a pulp masterpiece of the 1950s was The Incredible Shrinking Man 1957, based on Richard Matheson's existentialist novel. The film tells the story of a man, who after getting exposed to a radioactive cloud, gets shrunk in height by several inches. The film conveyed the fears of living in the atomic age and the terror of social alienation. It won the first Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation and was named in 2009 to the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress for being culturally, historically or aesthetically significant. The independently produced sci-fi film Attack of the 50-Foot Woman was made in 1958. The storyline concerns the plight of a wealthy heiress whose close encounter with an enormous alien causes her to grow into a giantess, complicating her marriage already troubled by a philandering husband. The film has become a cult classic and is often referenced in popular culture. Attack of the 50-Foot Woman is a variation on other 1950s science fiction films that featured size-changing humans, The Amazing Colossal Man 1957, its sequel War of the Colossal Beast 1958, and The Incredible Shrinking Man 1957. The United Kingdom began to emerge as a major producer of horror films around this time. The Hammer Company focused on the genre for the first time, enjoying huge international success from films involving classic horror characters which were shown in color for the first time. Drawing on Universal's precedent, many films produced were Frankenstein and Dracula remakes, followed by many sequels. Christopher Lee starred in a number of Hammer horror films, including The Curse of Frankenstein, 1957, which Professor Patricia McCormack called the first really gory horror film, showing blood and guts in color. His most influential role was as Count Dracula, with Lee's portrayal becoming the archetypal vampire in popular culture. The academic Christopher Frailing writes of Lee's 1958 film, Dracula introduced fangs, red contact lenses, decolletage, ready prepared wooden stakes and, in the celebrated credits sequence, blood being spattered from off-screen over the Count's coffin. Lee also introduced a dark, brooding sexuality to the character, with Tim Stanley stating, Lee's sensuality was subversive in that it hinted that women might quite like having their neck chewed on by a stud. Other British companies contributed to a boom in horror film production in the United Kingdom in the 1960s and 1970s. In television, the anthology series The Twilight Zone (1959–1964) has become a staple in horror fiction. Each episode presents a standalone story in which characters find themselves dealing with often disturbing or unusual events, an experience described as entering the Twilight Zone. Although predominantly science fiction, the show's paranormal and Kafkaesque events leaned the show towards fantasy and horror. The phrase, "'Twilight Zone' is used today to describe surreal experiences. <laughs> 1960s 
Released in May 1960, the British psychological thriller film, Peeping Tom 1960 by Michael Powell, is a progenitor of the contemporary slasher film, though Alfred Hitchcock cemented the subgenre with Psycho released also in the same year. Hitchcock, considered to be the master of suspense, didn't set out to frighten fans the way many other traditional horror filmmakers do. Instead, he helped pioneer the art of psychological suspense. As a result, he managed to frighten his viewers by getting to the root of their deepest fears. One of his most frightening films besides Psycho is The Birds 1963, where a seemingly idyllic town is overrun by violent birds. France continued the mad scientist theme with the film Eyes Without a Face 1960. The story follows Parisian police in search of the culprit responsible for the deaths of young women whose faces have been mutilated. In Criterion's description of the film, they say it include images of terror, of gore, and of inexplicable beauty. Meanwhile, Italian horror films became internationally notable thanks to Mario Bava's contributions. His film La Maschera del Demonio 1960, marketed in English as The Mask of Satan then wound up being known as Black Sunday in the United States and Revenge of the Vampire in the United Kingdom. In this film, Bava turned a Russian folk legend into a beguiling fairy tale about a young doctor who finds himself stranded in a haunted community and falls for a woman whose body become possessed by a woman executed for witchcraft. Three years later, Bava went on to make the horror anthology film Black Sabbath 1963, known in Italy as I Tre Volti della Paura, literally The Three Faces of Fear. In the United States, gimmicks continued to be used to entice filmgoers into theaters. William Castle's 1960 horror film Thirteen Ghosts was shot in Illusion O, where audiences were given a supernatural viewer that they could wear to see hidden ghosts in the film. In Thirteen Ghosts, a family searches for fortune inside the mansion of a reclusive doctor who passed away. They will need to search the house to find the doctor's fortune, but along with the property they have also inherited the occultist's collection of Thirteen Ghosts. In 1961, Castle made Mr. Sardonicus. It tells the story of a man whose face becomes frozen in a horrifying grin while robbing his father's grave to obtain a winning lottery ticket. During the promotion of the film, Castle introduced the punishment poll where the audiences decide what happens to Mr. Sardonicus in the film. All they had to do was hold up a thumbs up ballot if they wanted Mr. Sardonicus go free or thumbs down if they want to punish him. Supposedly no audience ever voted for life over death, so the film continues as if the audience's majority verdict was seriously counted. Also in the same year, William Castle made Homicidal, which follows a murderous woman in a small California town. A «fright break» was featured during the film where the audiences are shown a timer over the terrifying climax. The audiences who are too frightened to see the end of the film are given 25 seconds to walk out of the theater and into the «coward's corner» where they could get a full refund of their ticket and a free blood pressure test. Francis Ford Coppola in his feature debut also used gimmicks in the screenings for his 1963 horror, thriller Dementia 13. Before you could see the film inside the theaters, you had to pass a 13-question test that included such questions as did you ever do anything seriously wrong for which you felt little or no guilt, and have you ever been hospitalized in a locked mental ward or other facility for treatment of mental illness? If audiences failed any of the questions they wouldn't be allowed inside the theater. In Dementia 13, a scheming widow hatches a daring plan to get her hands on her late husband's inheritance, unbeknownst to her that she is targeted by an axe-wielding murderer who lurks within the family's estate. The American International Pictures AIP, in the early 60s, made a series of films based on stories by Edgar Allan Poe, most of which star Vincent Price, who became well known for his performances in subsequent horror films of the time. His success in House of Usher 1960, led him to do other Poe adaptions like Tales of Terror 1962, and The Mask of the Red Death 1964. Other popular Vincent Price horror films include House on Haunted Hill 1959, and The Last Man on Earth 1964, where Price becomes a reluctant vampire hunter after becoming the last man on Earth. The British horror film The Haunting 1963, was directed and produced by Robert Wise. 
It is an adaptation of the 1959 horror novel The Haunting of Hill House by famed horror writer Shirley Jackson. Robert Wise's The Haunting is considered by a great many critics, aficionados, and casual fans of the horror genre to be one of the scariest films of all time. The film is best known for its brilliant use of canted frames, mirror reflections, fisheye lenses and uncanny sound and image editing. Roman Polanski made his first film in English with Repulsion, 1965, which is considered to be his scariest and most disturbing work. Polanski's evocations of sexual panic and masterful use of sound puts the audience's imagination to work in numerous ways. This psychological horror film tells the story of a young withdrawn woman who finds sexual advances repulsive and who, after she is left alone, becomes even more isolated and detached from reality. Horror films of the 1960s used the supernatural premise to express the horror of the demonic. Jack Clayton's The Innocents tell the story of a governess who fears that the children she is watching over are possessed by ghosts haunting the estate they are staying. The story was based on Henry James' 1898 horror novella The Turn of the Screw. A few years later, Roman Polanski wrote and directed Rosemary's Baby 1968, based on the best-selling horror novel by Ira Levin. The highly influential film tells the story of a pregnant woman who suspects that an evil cult wants to take her baby for use in their rituals. Meanwhile, ghosts were a dominant theme in Japanese horror, in such films as Kwaiden, Onibaba, both 1964, and Kuroneko Another influential American horror film of the 60s was George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead 1968. Produced and directed by Romero on a budget of $114,000, it grossed $30 million internationally. Considered to be the first true zombie movie, the film began to combine psychological insights with gore. Distancing the era from earlier gothic trends, late 1960s films brought horror into everyday life. Low-budget splatter films from the likes of Herschel Gordon Lewis also gained prominence in the 1960s. It's the precursor to torture porn movies that would become popular in the following decades. Some of Lewis' notorious works include 2000 Maniacs, 1964, which follows a group of northern tourists savagely tortured and murdered during a Confederate celebration of a small southern community's centennial, and Color Me Blood Red, 1965, a story about a psychotic painter who murders civilians and uses their blood as red paint. In television, the animated mystery Hanna-Barbera series Scooby-Doo, Where Are You?, was broadcast from 1969 to 1970. The series centers on a group of teenagers and their dog who go to abandoned places to solve mysteries involving supposedly supernatural creatures through a series of antics and missteps. The animated series Simple Formula had a major impact on future slasher films especially of its portrayal of villains in masks. Topic: 1970s to 1980s. The 1970s began a new age for horror films with the transition from classic to modern horror. Horror films started to focus more on aggressiveness and ruthlessness while also focusing more on artistic qualities and societal themes. This era of horror films has been regarded as a golden age that transformed the genre by having it grow up. While showing that horror can be artistic, the 1970s was an era dominated by American horror films. Unlike the past, which was influenced heavily by European filmmakers, Americans breathed a new life into the genre. Modern horror films took the expected roles of characters in the films and changed them. This era changed the usual setting for horror films, using everyday settings. Along with this came a change from focusing on defeating evil every time to having some instances where good fails before succeeding. The critical and popular success of Rosemary's Baby, led to the release of more films with occult themes in the 1970s, such as The Omen 1976, wherein a man realizes that his five-year-old adopted son is the Antichrist. Invincible to human intervention, demons became villains in many horror films with a postmodern style and a dystopian worldview. Don't Look Now, 1973, an independent British-Italian film directed by Nicholas Rode, was also notable. Its focus on the psychology of grief was unusually strong for a film featuring a supernatural horror plot. 
Another notable film is The Wicker Man 1973, a British mystery horror film dealing with the practice of ancient pagan rituals in the modern era. In the 1970s, Italian filmmakers Mario Bava, Riccardo Frida, Antonio Margheriti, and Dario Argento developed giallo horror films that became classics and influenced the genre in other countries. Representative films include, Twitch of the Death, Nerve, Deep Red and Suspiria. The ideas of the 1960s began to influence horror films in the 70s, as the youth involved in the counterculture began exploring the medium. Wes Craven's The Hills Have Eyes 1977, and The Last House on the Left 1972, along with Toby Hooper's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974, recalled the Vietnam War, while George A. Romero satirized the consumer society in his zombie sequel, Dawn of the Dead 1978. Meanwhile, the subgenre of comedy horror reemerged in the cinema with The Abominable Drive Fives 1971, Young Frankenstein 1974, The Rocky Horror Picture Show 1975, and An American Werewolf in London 1981, among others. Also in the 1970s, the works of the horror author Stephen King began to be adapted for the screen, beginning with Brian De Palma's adaptation of Carrie 1976, King's first published novel, for which the two female leads, Sissy Spacek and Piper Laurie, gained Oscar nominations. Next, was his third published novel, The Shining 1980, directed by Stanley Kubrick, which was a sleeper at the box office. At first, many critics and viewers had negative feedback toward The Shining. However, the film is now known as one of Hollywood's most classic horror films. His psychological horror film has a variety of themes. Evil children. Alcoholism, telepathy, and insanity. This type of film is an example of how Hollywood's idea of horror started to evolve. Murder and violence were no longer the main themes of horror films. In the 1970s and 1980s, psychological and supernatural horror started to take over cinema. Another classic Hollywood horror film is Toby Hooper's Poltergeist 1982. Poltergeist is ranked the 20th scariest movie ever made by the Chicago Film Critics Association. Both The Shining and Poltergeist involve horror being based on real estate values. The evil and horror throughout the films come from where the movies are taking place. The Amityville Horror is a 1979 supernatural horror film directed by Stuart Rosenberg, based on Jay Anson's 1977 book of the same name. It stars James Brolin and Margot Kidder as a young couple who purchase a home they come to find haunted by combative supernatural forces. The Changeling is a 1980 Canadian psychological horror film directed by Peter Medic. Steven Spielberg's shark horror film, Jaws 1975, began a new wave of killer animal stories, such as Orca 1977, and Up from the Depths 1979. Jaws is often credited as being one of the first films to use traditionally B-movie elements such as horror and mild gore in a big-budget Hollywood film. In 1979, Don Coscarelli's Phantasm was the first of the Phantasm franchise. A cycle of slasher films began in the 1970s and 1980s with the creation of Halloween by John Carpenter. Halloween, was a significant influence on the horror industry and has become one of the quintessential forerunners of commercial horror films, grossing $70 million USD on a shoestring budget of $300,000 minus $325,000. Its influence and inspiration can still be seen in films today. Another notable 1970s slasher films are Bob Clark's Black Christmas 1974. Sleepaway Camp 1983, is known for its twist ending, which is considered by some to be one of the most shocking endings among horror films. My Bloody Valentine 1981, is a slasher film dealing with Valentine's Day fiction. The boom in slasher films provided enough material for numerous comedic spoofs of the genre including Saturday the 14th 1981, Student Bodies 1981, National Lampoon's Class Reunion 1982, and Hysterical 1983. This subgenre would be mined by dozens of increasingly violent movies throughout the subsequent decades. Sean S. Cunningham made Friday the 13th, 1980, Wes Craven directed A Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984, and Clive Barker made Hellraiser, 1987. Some films explored urban legends such as The Babysitter and The Man Upstairs. 
A notable example is When a Stranger Calls 1979, an American psychological horror film directed by Fred Walton starring Carol Kane and Charles Durning. Alien 1979, a British-American science fiction horror film directed by Ridley Scott was very successful, receiving both critical acclaim and being a box office success. John Carpenter's movie The Thing 1982, was also a mix of horror and sci-fi, but it was neither a box office nor critical hit, but soon became a cult classic. However, nearly 20 years after its release, it was praised for using ahead of its time special effects and paranoia. The 1980s saw a wave of gory, B-movie, horror films, although most of them were poorly reviewed by critics, many became cult classics and later saw success with critics. A significant example is Sam Raimi's Evil Dead movies, which were low-budget gore-fests but had a very original plotline which was later praised by critics. In the Philippines, the first Shake, Rattle and Roll 1984, was released. The horror anthology film spawned a franchise of films in the country over the subsequent decades. Day of the Dead is a 1985 horror film written and directed by George A. Romero and the third film in Romero's Night of the Living Dead series. Vampire horror was also popular in the 1980s, including cult vampire classics such as Fright Night (1985), The Lost Boys (1987), and Near Dark (also 1987). In 1984, Joe Dante's seminal monster comedy horror Gremlins became a box office hit with critics and audiences, and inspired a trend of little monster films such as Critters and Ghoulies, David Cronenberg's films such as Shivers (1975), Rabid (1977), The Brood (1979), The Dead Zone (1983), and The Fly (1986) dealt with body horror and mad scientist themes. Several science fiction action horror movies were released in the 1980s, notably Aliens 1986, and Predator 1987. Notable comedy horror films of the 1980s include Reanimator 1985, and Night of the Creeps 1986. Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer is a 1986 psychological horror crime film directed and co-written by John McNaughton about the random crime spree of a serial killer who seemingly operates with impunity. Pumpkinhead is a dark fantasy horror film, which is the directorial debut of special effects artist Stan Winston. Topic. 1990s. In the first half of the 1990s, the genre still contained many of the themes from the 1980s. The slasher films, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween, and Child's Play, all saw sequels in the 1990s, most of which met with varied amounts of success at the box office but all were panned by critics, with the exception of Wes Craven's New Nightmare, 1994, and the hugely successful film, The Silence of the Lambs, 1991. The latter, which stars Jodie Foster and Anthony Hopkins, is considered a major horror movie of all times. Misery 1990, also deals with a psychopath, and the film received critical acclaim for Kathy Bates's performance as the psychopathic Annie Wilkes. New Nightmare, Within the Mouth of Madness 1995, The Dark Half 1993, and Candyman 1992, were part of a mini-movement of self-reflexive or metafictional horror films. Each film touched upon the relationship between fictional horror and real-world horror. Candyman, for example, examined the link between an invented urban legend and the realistic horror of the racism that produced its villain. In the Mouth of Madness took a more literal approach, as its protagonist actually hopped from the real world into a novel created by the madman he was hired to track down. This reflective style became more overt and ironic with the arrival of Scream 1996. In Interview with the Vampire 1994, the Theater de Vampires and the film itself, to some degree, invoked the Grand Guignol style, perhaps to further remove the undead performers from humanity, morality and class. The horror movie soon continued its search for new and effective frights. In the 1985 novel, The Vampire Lestat, by the author Anne Rice, who penned Interview with the Vampire's screenplay in the 1976 novel of the same name, suggests that its anti-hero Lestat inspired and nurtured the Grand Guignol style and theater. Two main problems pushed horror backward during this period. Firstly, the horror genre wore itself out with the proliferation of non-stop slasher and gore films in the 80s. 
Secondly, the adolescent audience which feasted on the blood and morbidity of the previous decade grew up, and the replacement audience for films of an imaginative nature were being captured instead by the explosion of science fiction and fantasy films, courtesy of the special effects possibilities with advances made in computer-generated imagery. Examples of these CGI include movies like Species (1995), Anaconda (1997), Mimic (1997), Blade (1998), Deep Rising (1998), House on Haunted Hill (1999), Sleepy Hollow (1999), and The Haunting (1999). To reconnect with its audience, horror became more self-mockingly ironic and outright parodic, especially in the latter half of the 1990s. Peter Jackson's Brain Dead 1992, known as Dead Alive in the United States, took the splatter film to ridiculous excesses for comic effect. Wes Craven's Scream, written by Kevin Williamson, movies starting in 1996, featured teenagers who were fully aware of and often made reference to the history of horror movies and mixed ironic humor with the shocks despite Scream 2 and Scream 3 utilizing less use of the humor of the original until Scream 4 in 2011 and rather more references to horror film conventions. Along with I Know What You Did Last Summer 1997, also written by Williamson and Urban Legend 1998, they reignited the dormant slasher film genre. Event Horizon 1997, is a British-American science fiction horror film directed by Paul W. S. Anderson. The Sixth Sense 1999, is a supernatural horror film written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan, which tells the story of Cole Sear, Haley Joel Osment, a troubled, isolated boy who is able to see and talk to the dead, and an equally troubled child psychologist named Malcolm Crow, Bruce Willis, who tries to help him. House on Haunted Hill is a 1999 horror film directed by William Malone which follows a group of strangers who are invited to a party at an abandoned asylum, where they are offered $1 million each by an amusement park mogul if they are able to survive the night. It is a remake of the 1959 film of the same title. Other horror films of the late 1990s include Cube 1997, The Faculty 1998, Disturbing Behavior 1998, Stew of Echoes 1999, Stigmata 1999, and Existence 1999. Monster horror was quite popular in the 1990s. Tremors 1990 is the first installment of the Tremors franchise. Lake Placid 1999, is another monster horror film, written by David E. Kelly and directed by Steve Miner. Another successful horror film is Audition, a 1999 Japanese film based on the novel of the same name, directed by Takashi Miike. Around this period, Japanese horror started becoming popular in English-speaking countries. The film The Last Broadcast 1998, served as inspiration for the highly successful The Blair Witch Project 1999, which popularized the found footage horror subgenre. The theme of witchcraft was also addressed in The Witches 1990, starring Angelica Houston, and The Craft 1996, a supernatural horror film directed by Andrew Fleming. Wolf is a 1994 romantic horror film following the transformation of a man, Jack Nicholson, into a werewolf. Ravenous 1999, starring Guy Pearce and directed by Antonia Bird is a quirky and gruesome movie based on the real-life horror story of the Donner Party that got stranded in the Sierra Nevada mountains in 1847 due to snow. Topic. 2000s. The decade started with American Psycho 2000, directed by Mary Harron starring Christian Bale as a charismatic serial killer and Manhattan business mogul. The movie was highly controversial when released and remains a cult classic today. Scary Movie 2000, a comedy horror directed by Keenan Ivory Wayans parodied of the horror, slasher, and mystery genres. The film received mixed reviews from critics. By contrast, Valentine 2001 was a conventional horror film. It had some success at the box office, but was derided by critics for being formulaic and relying on foregone horror film conventions. The Others 2001 was hugely successful, winning and being further nominated for many awards. It is a 2001 Spanish-American supernatural gothic horror film with elements of psychological horror. 
It was written, directed, and scored by Alejandro Aminabar. It stars Nicole Kidman and Finola Flanagan. Franchise films such as Jason X and Freddy vs. Jason also made a stand in theaters. Final Destination marked a successful revival of teen-centered horror and spawned five installments. Jeepers Creepers series was also successful. Films such as Hollow Man 2000, Cabin Fever 2002, House of 1000 Corpses 2003, the latter an exploitation horror film written, co-scored and directed by Rob Zombie in his directorial debut and the previous mentions helped bring the genre back to restricted ratings in theaters. Van Helsing 2004 and Underworld series had huge box office success, despite mostly negative reviews by critics. Ginger Snaps 2000 is a Canadian film dealing with the tragic transformation of a teenage girl who is bitten by a werewolf. Signs 2002 revived the science fiction alien theme. The Descent, a 2005 British adventure horror film written and directed by Neil Marshall was also successful. Another notable film is Drag Me to Hell, a 2009 American supernatural horror film co-written and directed by Sam Raimi. The Strangers 2008 deals with unprovoked stranger on stranger violence. The House of the Devil 2009 is inspired by the Satanic Panic of the 1980s. Trick R Treat is a 2007 anthology horror film written and directed by Michael Doherty and produced by Brian Singer. Black Water 2007 is a British Australian natural horror film. Another natural adventure horror film is The Ruins 2008, which is based on the novel of the same name by Scott Smith. Several horror film adaptations from comic books and video games were produced. 30 Days of Night 2007 is based on the comic book miniseries of the same name. The story focuses on an Alaskan town beset by vampires as it enters into a 30-day-long polar night. Comic book adaptations like the Blade series, Constantine 2005, and Hellboy 2004 also became box office successes. The Resident Evil video game franchise was adapted into a film released in March 2002, and several sequels followed. Other video game adaptations like Doom 2005 and Silent Hill 2006 also had moderate box office success. Some pronounced trends have marked horror films. Films from non-English language countries have become successful. The Devil's Backbone 2001 is such an example. It is a 2001 Spanish-Mexican Gothic horror film directed by Guillermo del Toro, and written by del Toro, David Munoz, and Antonio Trashoras. A French horror film Brotherhood of the Wolf 2001 became the second highest grossing French language film in the United States in the last two decades. The Swedish film Let the Right One In 2008 was also successful. Wreck is a 2007 Spanish zombie horror film, co-written and directed by Joan Balaguero and Paco Plaza. Martyrs 2008, a French-Canadian horror film, was controversial upon its release, receiving polarizing reviews. Another notable film is The Orphanage 2007, a Spanish horror film and the debut feature of Spanish filmmaker J. A. Bayona. A Tale of Two Sisters is a 2003 South Korean psychological drama horror film written and directed by Kim Ji-woon. Shudder is a Thai horror film which focuses on mysterious images seen in developed pictures. Cold Prey is a 2006 Norwegian slasher film directed by Raw Uthok. Another trend is the emergence of psychology to scare audiences, rather than gore. The Others 2001 proved to be a successful example of a psychological horror film. A minimalist approach which was equal parts Val Luton's theory of less is more, usually employing the low-budget techniques utilized on the Blair Witch Project 1999, has been evident, particularly in the emergence of Asian horror movies which have been remade into successful Americanized versions, such as The Ring 2002, The Grudge 2004, Dark Water 2005, and Pulse 2006. In March 2008, China banned the movies from its market. Credo 2008 and Triangle 2009 are two British psychological horror films. What Lies Beneath 2000 is a supernatural horror film directed by Robert Zemeckis, starring Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer as a couple who experience a strange haunting of their home. 
Orphan 2009 is a notable psychological horror film. Another psychological horror film is 1408 2007, based on Stephen King's 1999 short story of the same name. Two Australian horror films that deal with teenagers are Lake Mungo 2008 and The Loved Ones 2009. The films I Am Legend 2007, Quarantine 2008, Zombieland 2009, and 28 Days Later 2002 featured an update of the apocalyptic and aggressive zombie genre. The latter film spawned a sequel, 28 Weeks Later 2007. An updated remake of Dawn of the Dead 2004 soon appeared as well as the zombie comedy Shaun of the Dead 2004 and Spanish-Cuban comedy zombie film Wan of the Dead 2012. This resurgence led George A. Romero to return to his Living Dead series with Land of the Dead 2005, Diary of the Dead 2007, and Survival of the Dead 2009. Cannibals were present in horror films such as Dharma 2002, Wrong Turn 2003, Tooth and Nail 2007, and Dying Breed 2008. Jennifer's Body 2009, starring Megan Fox and Amanda Seyfried, written by Diablo Cody and directly by Karen Kusama brings a succubus into a suburban American high school. The Australian film Wolf Creek 2005, written, co-produced, and directed by Greg McLean revolves around three backpackers who find themselves taken captive and after a brief escape, hunted down by Mick Taylor in the Australian outback. The film was ambiguously marketed as being based on true events. The plot bore elements reminiscent of the real-life murders of tourists by Ivan Millar in the 1990s, and Bradley Murdoch in 2001, and contained more extreme violence. An extension of this trend was the emergence of a type of horror with emphasis on depictions of torture, suffering, and violent deaths, variously referred to as, "...horror porn", "...torture porn", "...splatter porn", and "...gornography". With films such as Ghost Ship 2002, The Collector 2009, Saw 2004, Hostel 2005, and their respective sequels, frequently singled out as examples of emergence of this subgenre. In 2010 the Saw film series held the Guinness World Record of the highest grossing horror franchise in history. Finally, with the arrival of Paranormal Activity 2007, which was well received by critics and an excellent reception at the box office, minimalist horror approach started by the Blair Witch Project was reaffirmed. Cloverfield 2008 is another found footage horror film. The Mist 2007 is a science fiction horror film based on the 1980 novella of the same name by Stephen King. Antichrist 2009, is an English-language Danish experimental horror film written and directed by Lars von Trier, and starring Willem Dafoe and Charlotte Gansborg. The Exorcism of Emily Rose is a 2005 legal drama horror film directed by Scott Derrickson, loosely based on the story of Annalisa Mitchell. The Children 2008, is British horror film focusing on the mayhem created by several children. Another 2008 British horror film is Eden Lake. Remakes of earlier horror movies became routine in the 2000s. In addition to the remake of Dawn of the Dead 2004, as well as the remake of both Herschel Gordon Lewis cult classic 2001 Maniacs 2003, and the remake of Toby Hooper's classic The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003, there was also the 2007 Rob Zombie written and directed remake of John Carpenter's Halloween. The film focused more on Michael's backstory than the original did, devoting the first half of the film to Michael's childhood. It was critically panned by most, but was a success in its theatrical run, spurring its own sequel. This film helped to start a reimagining riot in horror filmmakers. Among the many remakes or reimaginings of other popular horror films and franchises are films such as 13 Ghosts 2001, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003, The Hills Have Eyes 2006, Friday the 13th 2009, Children of the Corn 2009, Halloween 2007, Prom Night 2008, The Omen 2006, Carrie 2002, The Wicker Man 2006, Day of the Dead 2008, Night of the Demons 2009, My Bloody Valentine 2009, 
2009, Willard 2003, Black Christmas 2006, The Amityville Horror 2005, April Fool's Day 2008, The Fog 2005, The Hitcher 2007, It's Alive 2009, When a Stranger Calls 2006, and The Last House on the Left 2009. Topic 2010s. Remakes remain popular, with films such as A Nightmare on Elm Street (2010), The Crazies (2010), I Spit on Your Grave (2010), Don't Be Afraid of the Dark (2010), Fright Night (2011), Maniac (2012), Poltergeist (2015), and Suspiria (2018). The 1976 film, Carrie, saw its second remake in 2013, which is the third film adaptation of Stephen King's 1974 novel of the same name. Child's Play saw a sequel with Curse of Chucky 2013, while Hellraiser – Judgment 2018 become the tenth installment in the Hellraiser film series. Halloween is a 2018 slasher film which is the 11th installment in the Halloween film series, and a direct sequel to the 1978 film of the same name, while affecting a retcon of all previous sequels. The 2013 Evil Dead is the fourth installment in the Evil Dead franchise, and serves as a soft reboot of the original 1981 film and as a continuation to the original film trilogy. Serialized, found footage style web videos featuring Slender Man became popular on YouTube in the beginning of the decade. Such series included Tribet 12, Everyman Hybrid, and Marble Hornets, the latter of which has been adapted into a feature film. Slender Man 2018 is supernatural horror film, based on the character of the same name. The character as well as the multiple series is credited with reinvigorating interest in found footage as well as urban folklore. Horror has become prominent on television with The Walking Dead, American Horror Story, and The Strain, and on online streaming services like Netflix's Stranger Things and Haunting of Hill House. Also, many popular horror films have had successful television series made, Psycho spawned Bates Motel, The Silence of the Lambs spawned Hannibal, and both Scream and Friday the 13th had TV series in development, Your Next 2011 and The Cabin in the Woods 2012 led to a return to the slasher genre, the latter was intended also as a critical satire of torture porn. The Green Inferno 2015 pays homage to the controversial horror film, Cannibal Holocaust 1980. The Australian psychological horror film, The Babadook 2014, directed by Jennifer Kent received critical acclaim and won many awards. It follows 2014 subverted traditional horror tropes of sexuality and slasher films and enjoyed commercial and critical success. The Conjuring Universe is a series of horror films which deal with the paranormal. The series includes The Conjuring 2013, Annabelle 2014, The Conjuring 2 2016, Annabelle, Creation 2017, The Nun 2018, The Curse of La Llorona 2019, and the upcoming Annabelle Comes Home 2019. Sinister 2012 is a British-American supernatural horror film directed by Scott Derrickson and written by Derrickson and C. Robert Cargill. Another notable supernatural horror film is Insidious 2010. The Witch 2015 is a historical period supernatural horror film written and directed by Robert Eggers in his directorial debut, which follows a Puritan family encountering forces of evil in the woods beyond their New England farm. Get Out 2017 received universal acclaim from critics and audiences alike. Its plot follows a black man who uncovers a disturbing secret when he meets the family of his white girlfriend. Adapted from the Stephen King novel, it 2017 set a box office record for horror films by grossing $123.1 million on opening weekend in the United States and nearly $185 million globally. Gerald's Game 2017 is a psychological horror film based on Stephen King's novel of the same name. Other horror films include Frozen 2010, Black Swan 2010, Devil 2010, The Innkeepers 2011, Oculus 2013, Under the Skin 2013, Mama 2013, Green Room 2015, The Invitation 2015, Hush 2016, Lights Out 2016, Don't Breathe 2016, The Endless Revenge 2017 film Mother. 
2017, It Comes at Night 2017, and Unsane 2018, Upgrade Film 2018, Overlord 2018 Film, Mandy 2018, Suspiria, Apostle, Cam, Wildling, Ghost Stories, Cargo, Terrifier, Piwacket, The Strangers, Pray at Night, Lowlife, Marrowbone, Downrange, Gonjam, Haunted Asylum. A Quiet Place 2018, is a critically acclaimed post-apocalyptic science fiction horror film with a plot that follows a family who must live life in silence while hiding from extraterrestrial creatures that arrived on Earth on fragments from their exploded home planet, and which hunt exclusively by sound. Annihilation 2018, is another successful science fiction horror film. Hereditary 2018, follows a family haunted after the death of their secretive grandmother. 2018 and 2019 saw the rise of Jordan Peele as a director of allegorical horror thriller films. Get Out addresses modern racism and the concept of slavery by following an African-American man as he makes a chilling discovery regarding his white girlfriend's upper-class family. Get Out received four Oscar nominations Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Original Screenplay at the 90th Academy Awards, of which Peele won the Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. Peel's sophomore film, as, addresses social class and privilege as it follows a family terrorized by their murderous doppelgangers. Several notable found footage horror films were produced, including The Last Exorcism 2010, VHS 2012, Unfriended 2014, The Taking of Deborah Logan 2014, The Visit 2015. Various themes were addressed in the horror of this period. Horror films which deal with troubled teens include Excision 2012 and Split 2016. The Autopsy of Jane Doe 2016 depicts coroners who experience supernatural phenomena while examining the body of an unidentified woman. The Purge is an action horror film franchise, consisting of four films and a television series, which are based on a future dystopian United States, where all crime is made legal once a year. Contracted 2013, Starry Eyes 2014, American Mary 2012, deal with body horror. Kill List 2011, is a British crime drama psychological horror film which deals with contract killers. The Hallow 2015, follows a family who go to a remote rural place in Ireland and have to deal with demonic creatures living in the woods. Prometheus 2012, and Alien, Covenant 2017, address extraterrestrial themes. Friend Request 2016 and The Den 2013 are examples of cyber horror. The Neon Demon 2016 follows an aspiring model in Los Angeles whose beauty and youth generate intense fascination and jealousy within the industry. Hashtag Horror 2015 depicts a group of wealthy seventh-grade girls who face a night of terror together after a social network game spirals out of control. The Other Side of the Door 2016, deals with a mother who attempts to use a ritual to meet her dead son for a last time to say goodbye, but misuses the ritual. Truth or Dare 2018, follows a group of college students who play a game of Truth or Dare while on vacation in Mexico, only to realize it has deadly consequences if they don't follow through on their tasks. Ouija, Origin of Evil 2016, focuses on a widow and her family adding a Ouija board to their phony seance business where, unbeknownst to them, they invite a spirit that possesses the youngest daughter. The Black Coat's Daughter, also known as February, is a 2015 American-Canadian supernatural psychological horror film which follows two Catholic schoolgirls who get left behind at their boarding school over winter break, where the nuns are rumored to be Satanists. The success of non-English language films continued with the Swedish film, Marianne 2011, while Let the Right One in 2008 was the subject of a Hollywood remake, Let Me in 2010. South Korean horror produced I Saw the Devil 2010, and Train to Busan 2016. Raw is a 2016 French-Belgian horror drama written and directed by Julia Ducournay, and starring Garance Marilia. Good Night Mommy 2014 German, Ixe, Ixe, is an Austrian horror film. Veronica is a 2017 Spanish horror film loosely based on real events. A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night 2014, directed by Anna Lilia Mirpur is vampire film in Persian that transcends simple vampire and horror categorization. 
Untamed 2016, directed by Amit Escalante is a unique psychological sexual thriller. The 2017 slasher film, Happy Death Day follows a college student who is murdered on her birthday and begins reliving the day repeatedly, at which point she sets out to find the killer and stop her death. It grossed $125 million worldwide on a $4.8 million budget and received generally positive reviews, with critics deeming the film entertaining while acknowledging the familiar premise, and describing it as, "...Groundhog Day meets Scream." A sequel, Happy Death Day to You, was released in February 2019. In late 2018, Netflix premiered the post-apocalyptic thriller film Bird Box which became an internet sensation even well into January 2019. The film follows a woman, played by Sandra Bullock, who, along with a pair of children, must make it through a forest and river. They must do so blindfolded, to avoid supernatural entities that seemingly cause people who look at them to die by suicide. The hashtag hashtag Bird Box trended for weeks. People shared memes in regards to the movie, even inspiring the Bird Box Blindfold Challenge, in which participants wear blindfolds while trying to do day-to-day -day activities. Topic: <inaudible> Subgenres. Action horror, a subgenre combining the intrusion of an evil force, event, or personage of horror movies with the weapon fights and frenetic chases of the action genre. Themes or elements often prevalent in typical action horror films include gore, demons, aliens, vicious animals, vampires, and, most commonly, zombies. This category also fuses the fantasy genre. Examples include, Aliens, Predator, Dog Soldiers, Blade, From Dusk Till Dawn, I Saw the Devil, Resident Evil, Feast, Train to Busan, The Purge series, and Upgrade. Body horror, in which the horror is principally derived from the graphic destruction or degeneration of the body. Other types of body horror include unnatural movements, or the anatomically incorrect placement of limbs to create monsters out of human body parts. David Cronenberg is one of the notable directors of the genre. Body horror films include, Starry Eyes, Videodrome, Dead Ringers, Contracted, The Thing, The Fly, and American Mary. Comedy horror, combines elements of comedy and horror fiction. The comedy horror genre often crosses over with the black comedy genre and are occasionally also horror films with a lower rating aimed at a family audience. The short story The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving is cited as the first great comedy horror story. Examples of comedy horror films include, An American Werewolf in London, Beetlejuice, Jennifer's Body, Teeth, Nina Forever, Slither, The Evil Dead, Army of Darkness, Shaun of the Dead, Zombieland, Scary Movie and Idle Hands. Gremlins, Paranorman, and Ghostbusters were examples of comedy horror films aimed at a family audience. Holiday Horror, a film which depicts horror events which are set during a holiday or holiday season. It often involves a psychopathic killer stalking a sequence of victims in a violent manner. It is set during Christmas, Halloween, Valentine's Day, April Fool's Day, or Thanksgiving. Examples include, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Black Christmas, Halloween, My Bloody Valentine, Home Sweet Home, April Fool's Day, Valentine, Trick R Treat, and All Through the House. Horror Adventure, a film that blends expeditions, exploration, exotic places and other adventure elements in a horror setting. Examples include, King Kong, The Descent, Silent Hill, Jaws, Cannibal Holocaust, and Anaconda. Horror Drama, a film that focuses on imperiled characters dealing with realistic emotional struggles, often involving dysfunctional family relations, in a horror setting. The film's horror elements often serve as a backdrop to an unraveling dramatic plot. Examples include, Dark Water, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, Lights Out, The Babadook, The Fly, It, Let the Right One In, Antichrist, Excision, Mama, The Sixth Sense, and Audition. Psychological horror, relies on characters' fears, guilt, beliefs, eerie sound effects, relevant music, emotional instability and at times, the supernatural and ghosts, to build tension, scare and further the plot. Notable psychological horror films include, Repulsion, Rosemary's Baby, The Shining, May, Credo, Black Swan, The Changeling, Silent Hill, The Uninvited, and Get Out. Science fiction horror, often revolves around subjects that include but are not limited to killer aliens, mad scientists, and or experiments gone wrong. 
Examples include, Frankenstein, Species, Mimic, Alien, The Fly, The Thing, The Blob, Apollo 18, Event Horizon, and Resident Evil. Slasher film, often revolves around a serial killer who systematically murders people through violent means. Examples include, Psycho, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Black Christmas, Halloween, Friday the 13th, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Child's Play, and Scream. Splatter film, these films deliberately focus on graphic portrayals of gore and graphic violence. Through the use of special effects and excessive blood and guts, they tend to display an overt interest in the vulnerability of the human body and the theatricality of its mutilation. Examples of splatter horror films include, Inside, Train, The Human Centipede, Hostel, Saw, Blood Feast, Storm Warning, and Maniac. Supernatural horror, includes menacing ghosts, demons, or other depictions of supernatural occurrences. Supernatural horror films often combine elements of religion into the plot. Common themes include vengeful ghosts, witches, the devil, and demonic possession. Examples include, The Ring, The Grudge, The Amityville Horror, It, The Omen, The Exorcist, Paranormal Activity, The Blair Witch Project, The Conjuring, Hereditary, Sinister, and Suspiria. Horror thriller is a subgenre that contains the elements of the horror genre, ghosts, killers, psychopaths, and monsters, with the tension build-up of the thriller genre. Examples include The Invitation, Don't Breathe, Peeping Tom, The Silence of the Lambs, Joy Ride, and A Quiet Place. Gothic horror – Gothic horror is a type of story that contains elements of goth and horror. At times it may have romance that unfolds in the setting of a horror tale, usually suspenseful. Some of the earliest horror movies were of this subgenre. Examples include, Dracula, Sleepy Hollow, The Others, The Phantom of the Opera, Kill, Baby, Kill, Nosferatu, and Crimson Peak. Natural horror, a subgenre of horror films. Featuring nature running amok in the form of mutated beasts, carnivorous insects, and normally harmless animals or plants turned into cold-blooded killers. This genre may sometimes overlap with the science fiction and action and adventure genres. Examples include, The Birds, Jaws, Piranha, Bats, Lake Placid, Rogue, Alligator, and Blackwater. Zombie film, zombie films feature creatures who are usually portrayed as either reanimated corpses or mindless human beings. Distinct subgenres have evolved, such as the zombie comedy, which may or may not retain a significant horror theme, and often crosses into black comedy. Examples include, White Zombie, Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Wreck, 28 Days Later, Dead Girl, Dead Snow, Night of the Creeps, and Messiah of Evil. Found footage horror, a film, technique, sometimes referred to as a subgenre which involves giving the audience a first-person view of the story that is discovered from an original recording source within the plot. Recording film in this way merges the audience with the character's experiences inducing suspense, shock, and bafflement. Examples of first-person horror include The Blair Witch Project 1999, Paranormal Activity 2007, Cloverfield 2008, and Devil's Due 2014. Teen horror, a horror subgenre that victimizes teenagers while usually promoting strong, anti-conformity teenage leads, appealing to young generations. This subgenre often depicts themes of sex, underage drinking, and gore. It was most popular in 1964 and 1965. Cyber horror, a film which is either has its narrative told all through a computer or any other form of technology, or that utilizes technology as a key plot element. Examples include Unfriended, Friend Request, and The Den. Superhero horror, combining superhero film tropes, cliches, and styles into a horror scenario. Examples include Brightburn and The New Mutants. Topic. Influences Topic. Influences on society Horror films' evolution throughout the years has given society a new approach to resourcefully utilize their benefits. The horror film style has changed over time, but, in 1996, Scream set off a chain of copycats leading to a new variety of teenage, horror movies. 
His new approach to horror films began to gradually earn more and more revenue as seen in the progress of screen movies. The first movie earned $6 million and the third movie earned $101 million. The importance that horror films have gained in the public and producers' eyes is one obvious effect on our society. Horror films' income expansion is only the first sign of the influences of horror flicks. The role of women and how women see themselves in the movie industry has been altered by the horror genre. Early horror films such as My Bloody Valentine 1981, Halloween 1978, and Friday the 13th 1980 were produced mostly for male audiences in order to feed the fantasies of young men. This idea is no longer prevalent in horror films, as women have become not only the main audience and fans of horror films but also the main protagonists of contemporary horror films. Movie makers have also begun to integrate topics more broadly associated with other genres into their films in order to grow audience appeal. Many early horror films created great social and legal controversy. In the U.S., the Motion Picture Production Code which was implemented in 1930, set moral guidelines for film content, restraining movies containing controversial themes, graphic violence, explicit sexuality and or nudity. The gradual abandonment of the code, and its eventual formal repeal in 1968 when it was replaced by the MPAA film rating system, offered more freedom to the movie industry. Nevertheless, controversy continued to surround horror movies, and many continued to face censorship issues around the world. For example, 1978's I Spit on Your Grave, an American rape and revenge exploitation horror film written, co-produced, directed, and edited by Miyazaki, was received negatively by critics, but it attracted a great deal of national and international attention due to its explicit scenes of rape, murder and prolonged nudity, which led to bans in countries such as Ireland, Norway, Iceland, and West Germany. Many of these countries later removed the ban, but the film remains prohibited in Ireland. Topic. Influences internationally While horror is only one genre of film, the influence it presents to the international community is large. Horror movies tend to be a vessel for showing eras of audiences' issues across the globe visually and in the most effective manner. Gene Hall, a film theorist, agrees with the use of horror films in easing the process of understanding issues by making use of their optical elements. The use of horror films to help audiences understand international prior historical events occurs, for example, to depict the horrors of the Vietnam War, the Holocaust and the worldwide AIDS epidemic. However, horror movies do not always present positive endings. In fact, in many occurrences the manipulation of horror presents cultural definitions that are not accurate, yet set an example to which a person relates to that specific cultural from then on in their life. The visual interpretations of films can be lost in the translation of their elements from one culture to another, like in the adaptation of the Japanese film Juon into the American film The Grudge. The cultural components from Japan were slowly siphoned away to make the film more relatable to a Western audience. This deterioration that can occur in an international remake happens by over-presenting negative cultural assumptions that, as time passes, sets a common ideal about that particular culture in each individual. Holmes' discussion of the grudge remakes presents this idea by stating, it is, instead, to note that the grudge films make use of an UN-theorized notion of Japan that seek to directly represent the country. Topic. See also Lists of horror films